guys welcome back to my channel I hope you guys are having a wonderful Monday today we're going to talk about the products that I pulled in last week's makeup basket Monday series and then we're going to talk about the new products I'm going to be playing with this week so the first thing we're, we're going to end with the subculture for this week so I will talk about that last so first we're going to talk about this benefit palette that I was playing with this is the benefit cheap parade palette I like the design of this palette I feel like it's a very nice travel friendly palette because it's very it's cardboard and it's a nice hard cardboard it does have a nice big size mirror inside of here and then you do get five products you get three I'm sorry you get three cheap products and you get two bronzers so the two bronzers are here you're getting hula light and then the regular hula and then you're getting dandelion California and Rakatour. and then it also comes with a little brush this brush is fine it's not the best so I don't typically use the brush for me what I find in here in this palette is that the hula light doesn't really work for me that much it's too light for me especially right now because I'm still trying to come off you know the summer suntans and things like that so I think it might work better for me during like the fall and winter when my skin is completely back to normal the blushes are not very pigmented I can tell you that right now if you're using California blush you need to go in there with a very thick dense brush in order to pick up pigmentation because it just doesn't pick it up with you have a light brush like a light regular uh, blush brush it's not going to pick up enough that you're going to be able to build it up on your cheeks you need to go in with a heavier handed brush a heavier denser brush um dandelion is a very very light color it doesn't really work for me so this palette all in all honestly is not my favorite from the benefit collection i will continue to use it and i'm going to hold on to it just because i use my ulta points to get to get this product and if you return things with your ulta points you don't get all of your points back so it's kind of like you gotta have to make sure that you love what you get with your points if you don't love it then you're just gonna hold on to it that's my opinion anyway so and then Rakatour is very very uh, not really glittery it's very shiny so for me I kind of use that as a highlighter I think it works really good as a highlighter so all in all you could use this as an all-in-one palette you've got your bronzers your blushes and then this you can use as a highlighter that's how I do it I use it more as a blush topper so that it's kind of just laying right on top of the blush I think it works really well as a blush topper again the colors in here just aren't very pigmented i think the colors are just a very uh low key i think this is more suited for someone who has like maybe light to fair skin if you have medium to darker skin i don't think this palette's going to be any good for you at all for me it's it's something that i can work with but i have to work with it more i think once i my suntan is completely gone for the year the next thing is the urban decay this is the vice palette this thing gets disgusting like it's got fingerprints and stuff all over it's gross and then on the inside you do get this little flip part right here that flips open and you get all the little lip products so you get a plenty of different colors of lip products in here i don't like the brush the brush is very very dense like it's hard to use it the lip products however i feel like are very very good they go on my lips very easily they blend out very easily they stay on my lips they have pretty good longevity so i will hold on to this palette because i think it's worth holding on to this isn't something that i love though is lip palettes i think lip palettes are one of those things that's kind of hard to travel with those i know a lot of people do travel with them but for me it's just easier to reapply something if i don't have to whip out this big lip palette i'd rather have just a single lipstick it's just so much easier just to whip that out and reapply it versus getting out this big palette and then having to get the lip brush and then it's just a lot of work so it's not something that I will travel with but it's something that I will hold on to and use whenever I feel like it the next thing that I used this past week is the uh, Physicians Formula Organic Wear Bright Booster Oil Elixir I know some people were complaining they didn't like the smell to this I don't sm I don't think it smells bad at all it smells just very clean it's I mean it's obviously an oil so it's going to smell a little bit like an oil I think it just smells clean I really like this oil it does take a little bit longer for it to absorb into my skin I have very very dry skin so it's kind of like when you water a plant that was really dry and like if you put a whole bunch of water on all that water just kind of kind of flow over that's what I feel like this does on my skin it doesn't really sink in until I've let it set for a while so I have to let this set for a while before I can put any of my makeup on because if I try to put makeup on right over top of this it kind of just smears right off so it is a very good oil but I have to let it soak in first so I do love this the next thing is where's my foundation I lost my foundation for the week oh no yes I did I'll have to look for that um, the concealer I was using this week is the it cosmetics bye bye breakout this is actually a really good concealer I really do like this but I don't think it works for under your eyes it does have a little doe foot applicator inside of here it is for acne treatment because it does have let's see how much salicylic acid it has in it maybe it'll say on the box here Mm, perhaps I don't even see where it says how much salicylic acid is in here but I know that's the ingredient that's helping to 
um, helping to diminish your acne. If I can find that, <laughs> that would be helpful. I don't see it. If I see it, I'll insert it here if I can find how much uh, salicylic acid is in here. But it does help to diminish your, your, if you have acne problems, it will help to diminish that. But I would not recommend using, the, using this around your eyes. It will be very drying around your eyes. It works really well for acne because that's the whole point. It's drying your acne up. But because it's doing that, you just need to be careful. Make sure that your skin is very hydrated because it's going to start making your makeup look a little bit dry and cakey. So just be careful with that. I really do enjoy it though, so I will continue to use this because I do have acne issues, you guys know, which are getting a lot better. I don't know if you can tell or not because I have makeup on right now, but my acne issues have cleared up tremendously, and I'll have to do an updated skin routine because I am not using most of the Sunday Rally products anymore, which is a big surprise because I thought that was really helpful for my skin, but when I ran out of it this past time, I was like, let's try a different regimen, and I started using a different regimen, and it's working a lot better. The Let me see if I can find my... Uh, foundation and also I used this this week this is the super cat uh, liquid black eyeliner uh, by soap and glory this is more of like a felt tip marker it's not like the um, brush tip it works good but I wouldn't say it's the best it's a little bit streaky so I don't think it's the best one I've ever tried but it works fine so I'm gonna continue to use that I don't know if soap and glory is cruelty free though so I probably won't repurchase it if it is not cruelty free anything that is not cruelty free in my collection once I've used it up it's not coming back it will be gone from my collection for good and of course I'm gonna do some decluttering of things that I know that I'm just not gonna use so I need to work on that and then I think that was the last thing that I used that was new this week besides my foundation. Let me go find that. Okay, guys, I found the foundation. It was the Clinique. This is the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer. This stuff is very full coverage. It will cover up acne if you have acne issues, which is one reason why I didn't really have to use that. Uh, what is it called? It Cosmetics Bye Bye Acne, I think is what it's called. Bye bye breakout. I didn't really have to use that too much this week. I used it anyway just to see if it would help with my acne. I think it helps a little bit, but I wouldn't say it's anything that's going to give you great results. But the Clinique Beyond Perfecting Foundation and Concealer is very, very good for covering acne issues. If you have any kind of scarring issues or anything like that going on on your skin, it's going to do an excellent job. The only thing I don't like about it is the applicator. It's that doe foot applicator, but it's a huge one. It reminds me of the Tarte Shape Tape. I don't really like that too much. But as far as it goes, concealer, I mean concealer, yeah, it does, it is a concealer. It does a good job with concealing. It does a good job with foundation. You're going to have to, if you have dry skin like I do, you're going to have to use something that's going to hydrate your skin very, very well before you use this. Because if not, then it's going to look awful. It's going to look cakey. So I think you could pretty much use this with any skin type, but I think you're just going to have to take certain precautions for if you have dry skin versus if you have oily skin. If you have oily skin, I don't think you're going to have any issues whatsoever because it is a little bit more of a thicker concealer foundation so you want to make sure that your skin like I said is very hydrated so oily skin would be perfectly fine to be able to use it so I really did enjoy that and then the last thing we want to talk about for this past week was the Anastasia subculture palette it looks like this so the packaging is that felt not felt but like velvety type of material this one doesn't get quite as dirty as the modern renaissance which I totally appreciate because that one gets disgusting and then on the inside you do get all of your beautiful fallish type of eyeshadows all these colors are so gorgeous let me give you a close-up Look how gorgeous those are. I mean, they're so pretty. One of my favorites in here actually is the All Star, which is weird because that's pretty much a color that you could find in the modern renaissance. And then I really do like Adorn. The two colors I'm not super excited about is Electric and Cube. Cube is really pretty, but it's like you have to build that up a lot in order to be able to see pigmentation onto it. If you swatch it, it looks gorgeous. Let me swatch it for you. If you swatch it, it looks really, really pretty. But when you put it on your eyes, for some reason, the color payoff just isn't there for some reason. So see, even swatching isn't, isn't the best. I just think that's a color you have to really build up, which is odd because all the other colors in here, it seems like the shimmer colors are not the best, like that you have to build them up quite a bit. And then the mattes are super pigmented. So that's a little bit of a critique I have on this. The other critique is the obvious one is that it is a very powdery product. It's very soft to the touch. You're going to have to be careful when you go in with your brushes except for the shimmer colors. You don't really have to worry about those because you're going to have to keep building those. You kind of have to pack those on. But all your matte colors, which all the rest are mattes, you're going to have to be careful with because they're so pigmented that you can come out with a look that's going to be a little too extreme and then it's going to be hard to blend. 
some of these colors when you blend them together do not look so good together they start to muddy so it's one of those things that you're gonna have to kind of work with it a little bit I know a lot of people said that they wouldn't like to work with a palette but in my personal opinion is if you like the colors in a palette and you like playing with makeup and you like a little bit of a challenge I think you're gonna enjoy this palette I don't think it's anything that I can recommend and say hey go pick it up because it's not something that's gonna be easy to work with but it's not nothing that I would say is terrible so it's one of those things where I'm like I don't hate it but I don't love it so I, I just feel kind of like indifferent about it I just I really like the colors I like that it's very pigmented I like that it's versatile there's I mean the other critique would be that it doesn't have like a brow bone highlight because you can't use cube as that because that kind of like is an ear not iridescent but a duochrome it looks white in the pan you swatch it it's pink so that's not really a good one for a, a brow bone highlight so there are a couple critiques. The brush itself is not the best for this palette. I think they kind of put the wrong brush with this palette because the brush is a little too dense. So it picks up too much product and then it's harder to blend it out because you've got too much product on there. It does work good if you go ahead and pack your color down with a different brush and then blend out with that brush because it is so dense and so it's almost a little bit prickly. You blend it out with that, it'll help to blend the colors a little bit better. So I do think it can be used, but I think you're gonna have to use it in a different way than what you're used to if you're planning on using the brush. I just really do like this palette. I know a lot of people told me that they think they would return it, but I like the palette. I don't hate it. I don't love it. I like it. I like the colors. I like that it kind of gives me a little bit of a makeup challenge. So it's, it's fun to play with. I like things that kind of challenge me a little bit, especially in makeup, because I'm one of those, I'm still learning. So if you give me a challenge, then I'm up for it because I like to try to challenge myself with makeup. Even though I'm not the best at makeup, I'll take a challenge. So now moving on to this week's products that we're gonna be using. We have some new products which just hit the market on Friday so we're excited and I do have it on my eyes today and I have it on my cheeks today so I obviously I've already tested this out. This is the Too Faced Just Peachy Mattes palette so here's what the outside of the packaging looks like. I love the little detail they put on here where it looks like two peaches on the end where the little clasp is and then you open it up it does have a nice size mirror. This is very heavy. It's a very heavy compact. It reminds me of the Tartlet, the Tartlet and Bloom that style of packaging and then you open it up and you get all these beautiful colors in here the colors are absolutely gorgeous these are obviously all matte shades I'm in love with the colors so far to be honest with you I love the warm tones I know a lot of people are kind of sick of warm tones but and you probably have another million palettes in your collection that are just like these colors but I wanted to try this out and see how good it is it does smell like peaches but not like the last peach palette this one here smells very, very lightly scented of peaches. It's not very strong like the other one. So if you weren't hip on the peach scent products before, this one isn't very strong at all. You almost have to like stick it up your nose in order to smell it. You are getting 1.25 grams of product total in this palette. So no, 15 grams of product. I'm sorry, 15 grams total. And then each, each pan is 1.25 grams. So you're getting a good amount of product in here. And this is like $45. I'm pretty sure that's what it was on the old, on the Sephora website. So I'm going to be playing with this with this week and the get ready with me and everything. So I can tell you guys how it is. You guys can see it in action and know whether or not you want to purchase it. The next thing that I picked up from this collection was the Too Faced Sweetie Pie. This is the Radiant Matte Bronzer. It says it's infused with peach and sweet fig cream. Okay. And this one, again, doesn't smell very strongly of peach. But here's what the inside of this looks like. It's not, when you first get it, you're going to notice it has like almost like an overspray onto it because it's a little bit shiny. But once you've dug your brush into there, that kind of disappears and it is a matte type of formula. I don't think this is a total bronzer for me. I'm going to use it more or less as a blush because as a bronzer, it's got a little bit of that peachiness to it. And for me, it just doesn't look right as a bronzer so far that I've tried it. I tried it today as a bronzer and you can tell where I kind of bronzed here. It's a little too peachy. So I'm going to use it more as a blush because I like, I like blush and bronzer mixed together anyway. So that'll be fun to try out like that. Then because the bronzer is not really working for me, I'm going to go to my old standby, which is the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. Oh gosh, this one still smells amazing. It smells like vacation. Oh my goodness. It smells so good. If you guys have not picked this up yet, you have to because it just smells so good. The packaging is very tropical. The scent is very tropical. The whole thing is just very tropical. The foundation I'm going to be using is the, this is something I picked up at, at a CCO. If you're not familiar with that is, it's a cosmetic company outlet. I'm pretty sure that's how, what the, the letters stand for. So this is the Georgia, I picked this up a long time ago, by the way. This was before I started going cruelty free because this is not cruelty free. 
So this is the Giorgio Armani Lasting Silk UV Foundation. It does have an SPF of 20 in here, but the reason why I wanted to start using this is because it does have an expiration on here and it expires of November next year. So I want to use it up because it's a very expensive foundation. So I have it on my face today, which I really like the way it looks. Let me zoom you in closer so you can see how it looks so far. I mean, you can tell. I still have some acne. This side of my face is very, very clear now with the acne. This side over here, we still got a little bit of texture we're going on that we're working on. But I mean, the foundation itself, it just looks like skin. I really like this foundation. So I'm hoping that this will work really well for me this week. Looks, it looks a little promising right now. And then as far as primer, I'm using the Laura Mercier Foundation Primer, and this is the blemish, Blemishless one. This one is more like a cream texture. It reminds me a little bit of the Too Faced, the Hangover RX one, because it's, it's kind of like a lotion. And you guys know I love lotion primers. I adore those. So this is the primer I'm going to be using this week. And then as for lips this week, I've got two, three products here for lips. I've got the Too Faced Melted Matte in the shade Sellout, so I'm going to be using that. I'll go ahead and swatch it for you. Sellout looks like this. Very appropriate for the peach palette. And then we have the Too Faced, <laughs> the Sweet Peach Creamy Peach Oil Lip Gloss. This is like my favorite thing from their collection that I bought from the last part. Oh my gosh, this smells so amazing. And there's what that one looks like. It's just a little bit lighter than this. So, And then the last thing I'm going to be using is just a lip gloss. And this is the Makeup Forever Lab Shine Diamond Collection. And this is in the shade D14. I don't like how they label their names of their products. So this is basically just a lip gloss. And they're all just different shades of like a peachy shade, honestly. So that would be great for the peach palette, though, this week. Because I know it's going to be a lot of peach looks that I'm going to be doing. So I need to plan my outfits according, accordingly. Because it's going to be a lot of warm tone looks here going on. So anyway, that is everything I'm going to be using this upcoming week. I'd love to know if you guys are doing this with me, kind of rotating your makeup, trying your new makeup out, making sure you like it so that you can return it within a certain time frame. Because if this doesn't work out, believe it or not, I actually kept my receipts this time. So if I don't like these two products, they will be returned. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, I'll catch you guys later.